Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to A Purpose Driven Wife podcast. I'm your host, Trista LeBlon. In today's episode, I have a special guest with me. It's Michelle. And Michelle, please, you know, help me if I got this wrong. Raven? Very, that's right. Oh, yay. Okay, so Michelle Raven from Displaying Grace, and she is going to share with us just a little bit about what God, basically about her blog, uh, what God is doing in her heart, and however the Holy Spirit uh, leads. So I'm looking forward to that. But before we get started, guys, let me, if you're new to this um, podcast, guys, thank you so much for um, for listening and tuning in. And um, if you're new, like I said, um, my podcast is really about, you know, women, specifically military spouses that um, that are married or that are have children and that are entrepreneurs who are just trying to figure out how to, you know, stay encouraged along the journey. And, you know, even as a mom and a wife and everything in between, if you are just looking to get encouraged and uh, just some advice and tips, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit A Purpose Driven Wife podcast is where you want to be at. So... Guys, um, I have a really uh, special guest, like I mentioned earlier. Michelle um, is a writer on um, Displaying Grace, and she is going to share with us a little bit about what she does and um, and everything like that. So, Michelle, thank you so much for um, agreeing to do this. Um, I'm so excited. So, um, to get our listeners to learn a little bit more about you, can you share with us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um I am a mom. I've been married to my husband, Jeremy, for 10 years, three kids, nine, five, and two. Um, I have been at home with them the entire time um, since my littlest one was very, very small. Uh, We do homeschool, and I do run my own business and ministry out of my home. Um, And just a little bit, my testimony, um, I was saved when I was 19. I came to know the Lord. Um, in my late teenage years and, uh, because of a neighbor who shared the gospel with me. And, um, ever since that time over the last 11 years, uh, God has just worked on me and worked on my heart and through my marriage and through my children, uh, to just uh, reach out to women and to just encourage women with the word. Amen. So if you can talk about a little bit about your ministry, um, what is it that you do? Um, it's about three or four years ago. It, this, it, there's a backstory that kind of goes with it. Um, you know, it's kind of in a place where I didn't quite know uh, maybe who I was anymore. Maybe that's a good way to put it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I had small children and, you know, I was this artistic and creative person. And, and then I had kids. <laughs> And then, you know, I was mom and I did mom stuff and I homeschooled and, you know, I became that person and, you know, I felt disconnected from God and I felt like there was kind of a wedge between us and I didn't have the relationship that I was really craving and wanting. And, um, the kids and I were driving home one night from uh, my daughter's dance lessons and we were in a really bad car accident, Mm. um, And, you know, it it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse. But, you know, God spared all of our lives and, you know, just a few minor injuries. But it was really a moment for me where God said, I have a job for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. And I want more for you. Mm. And, you know, I took that as, okay, this is my chance to really see where God is leading and where he's taking me. And so I made this commitment. I said, I'm going to get up every morning. I'm going to get up early, though I am not a morning person (laughs) at all. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to get in his word, and I'm just going to figure this out. Um, He and I are going to figure this out. And so I did. I got up every morning. I got in. I got my coffee. I got got in the word. And, you know, it was like 10 minutes every morning before the kids got up. And that 10 minutes turned into 30 minutes. And then over time, that 30 minutes turned into an hour because I just couldn't get enough of his word. And over time, I started to see him work and do these things. And I just laid it all at his feet. And I was like, Lord, you know, you know what I what I can do. You've given me these talents. You've given me these abilities. What do you want me to do with them? And uh, about a year ago, I opened my little Etsy shop making uh, Bible tabs and 
Bible journaling things. And, you know, I told my husband, I was like, if it turns into something great, if it doesn't, at least I'm doing what God has asked. Amen. And, uh, he abundantly blessed that business. Uh, it blew my mind. The women that, that I was interacting with and, and, uh, talking about God's word with, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. You know, over a six month period, I had 250 Bible tab sets sold, 250 different women that I was able to pray for and just encourage. It It was absolutely incredible what God did in that. Amen. And, you know, in that same time I was writing and, you know, God would put these, um, you know, lessons that he was showing me from his word. And I was like, Oh, I want to share this. I want other women to see this. This is great. This is so good. This is what I needed as a Mm. mom and a wife and a woman who just loves the Lord. And so I began writing and the first real project I did was Christmas last year. Mm. And it was an Advent study. It was 25 days and it was going through scripture and just sitting at the feet of Jesus and why this season is so important. And just, it, it was so um, awe-inspiring of what God did in that time and the different women that I was able to interact with and just study the word with. Um, it was exactly, it felt like a, a, a home. It felt comfortable. It felt peaceful because I knew I was doing what God had asked. Amen. Um, And then I had the opportunity to speak as the first time I had ever done public speaking. I was, I asked God, are you sure that you really want me to do this? I am not this person. I don't think of myself as a speaker. Uh, And I was able to, to, at my home church, um, 50 women there for a Bible journaling workshop and Bible study. And it was It was absolutely incredible what God did in that place and in that time. And I could hear, it was like I could hear him whisper and just speak peace over me. And, you know, the spirit saying, this is exactly what I want you to do. This is exactly what um, God has for you. And thinking back to that accident when I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to let you have it. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Amen. Oh, man. So is and that's how the blog came, or um, it, the Etsy shop is what you're referring to. Um, that well, the blog and the Etsy shop kind of started at the same time, um, and so I was kind of doing them both simultaneously. Um, the I started the blog maybe two months prior, um, but I never really thought that you know writing would be uh, the thing that really became, um, what God was using, um, getting women in from the Etsy shop and, and they would start to read and then they would join for Bible study. And, um, you know, it, it, the Etsy shop became a tool of drawing women in to be able to encourage them to do Bible study. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Wow. So, okay. So that's the backstory. And so now, what is God doing now? Now, um, God has really put this burden on my heart for for community, for um, Bible study community for women, whether it's online, within the church, um, but just as a community of women coming together and studying His Word, being able to um, encourage women just wherever they are, you know, you don't have to study the word in the morning. You don't have to be, it, there's nothing to say that you have to do that, you know, but making sure and encouraging women that they are getting in his word at some point in the day mm-hmm. um, and writing. So I've been writing um, several small booklets. Um, I've done Craving More was the first one, and it's a 21-day journey through John, and it's just to get in that habit. It's to build that habit of being in the Word every single day. Yeah. And then the second one was um, Seeking Him, and it was it's a study through Psalm 119, and it's a little bit meatier. It has devotions throughout, and it also has that daily reading schedule, um, and 
I am working on another Christmas, um, a booklet now, and then there are, there's another one that's being edited and it is through the Beatitudes and the fruits of the spirit. So God is just kind of leading me in this place of Bible study. Just that's where, that's where my heart is, is Bible study and leading women in Bible study. I do lead a Bible study at my church every other Friday. Um, we have about 20 women that join us for Bible study and, um, I'm kind of coordinating the Bible studies within our church right now, but I want to see it grow, you know, outside of just those walls of the church, but community and women outside those walls of the church, drawing them in, sharing the gospel with them, sharing with them that Jesus loves them so much uh, and what he did for them and how much I know as a woman, we need to know that we need to know how much we're loved and how much God loves us, you know, despite whether, you know, we're in our sweatpants and we got spit up rolling down our, you know, backs or yeah. we haven't brushed our hair in a couple of days, you know, whatever it is, but that God loves you and he sees you where you are. And just that heart of, of sharing that with women, you know, that's where I'm at right now. Um, and just reaching women with that Bible study and, you know, for them to see his love for them through his word. Wow. So that is awesome. I actually have the book Seeking Him. Um, okay. Yeah. Psalm 119, because that's actually one of my favorite um, books. Oh, yeah. Mine too. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just love it. Um, Because of just how much, just the worship that's in 119, in Psalms 119. But I can go on and on. But, um, so I I love it. I I just love it. So, okay. So on your, on your blog, you are talking about God's pace, right? Yes. And I love that because that is something that I, I, I've had to learn and I feel like I'm still learning. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah, and so, um, okay, can you explain that? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting, um, you know, getting into ministry and starting the shop and starting the blog. It, God, it's so funny. I kind of compare it to a roller coaster. I mean, you're going like straight up and he's taking you on this crazy, wild, awesome ride but it's going 800 miles an hour yep. and you know, it, it was very, it got very busy, very fast. And, you know, I was filling 20 orders a week and homeschooling and, you know, taking care of my smaller children and still trying to invest in my marriage and my church and my, I mean, like it, it got crazy. And, um, I was just really tired and uh, we went on vacation. I took a little two week hiatus. And yeah. said, okay. I need, I need to go and seek the Lord and I need to just shut down for a little while and seek him. And you know, that slower pace of just resting in him and listening to him, you know, being so busy all the time, but realizing that that's not what he's asking me to do. He's not asking me to be so rushed. But then seeing that a lot of that rush and a lot of that hurry was me. I was doing that. He yeah. wasn't doing that. I was doing that. I was adding those extra things on my to-do list. And I was adding all of that extra pressure that was so unnecessary. Yeah. And, you know, just seeing that his pace looks nothing like mine. And I am I am a very type A, <laughs> um, overly organized to-do list calendar person. Really? That's me. I'm very, um, I like to know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. And, you know, on my to-do list, even if I've done it, I will go back and write it on my list just so I can (laughs) cross it off. Mm. Um, and I just realized, you know, I'm striving for the wrong reasons and my family's losing out. My ministry's losing out. My relationship with Christ is, being hurt because I'm so tired. And so I just prayed about that. And I saw him, I was like, Lord, you know, help me to see what your pace needs to be in my life and help me to live it out every single day. And so I've been writing over the last 
you know, couple of weeks about that pace, you know, the stillness and um, about uncertainty because, you know, uncertainty pops up and it's there. And oh, yeah. Nothing you can do about it, you know, and then God's pace when we're grieving. And, you know, my um, Monday was the anniversary of my dad's death suddenly. And then um, we had also had a miscarriage and our due date was also that same day. Mm. And so that day is very, very hard for me. So grief still comes on uh, every now and then it hits you all of a sudden. Grief is still real. Yeah. How do you embrace God's pace when the grief is there and, you know, him inviting us to slow down and just abide with him and dwell with him and just draw from him in those moments. And then to, um, today at some point, um, we're going to be talking about prayer and um, embracing his pace in prayer. So just kind of hitting all of these points that we deal with every single day as women, as mamas, as wives, Um, you know, as uh, church ministry workers, like all of these things, you know, how do we live out God's pace every single day in view of what he's asked, not what we want to get done, not what we are wanting to accomplish, but what he's asked of us to do. Amen. And you know what, that really speaks to me because, you know, for me, I love routine. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I thrive on it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so being a military spouse, when that when when I have to move, I have to get up every so year, every so often and move to a different location mm-hmm. and having to recreate it, sometimes it is very discouraging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's very discouraging because, you know, there's so many things that I'm trying to do. Like I'm like I'm talking to God, I'm saying, Lord, you know, I'm doing what you what you're telling me to do when it comes to the blog, the podcast, when it comes to me writing, you know, I, I'm doing it, you know. But but when something is interrupted, like, you know, when I'm having to move to a different location and I'm having to find, you know, different routines and different things like that, it discourages me to the point where I'm just like you know, did God tell me to do that? You know? (laughs) Oh yeah, I've been there. (laughs) And so, and so, you know, how, what, what can you say to that then, you know, to kind of get back into, you know what? Okay. Um, God, you know, is this something that you called me to do? And when sometimes when you, when you, when you're doubting yourself, when you re questioning God's word and, and things like that, can you speak on that? Oh, you know, I'm so, that so reminds me, you know, when we talk about how we get in this place where we're questioning, because I've done that. Oh, I've done that multiple times where we're questioning. We're saying, God, are you seriously? Is this, I mean, is this what you want for me? Yeah. And I think we have to go back to that place, to the beginning where he called us originally and be reminded, okay, Lord, I know when I was in this place, this is what you've asked of me. And you know, is this still the case? Yes. Not all callings last a lifetime. Yeah. You know, some callings are short, shorter, and some callings, you know, last a couple of years, and some callings may last 50 years. But, you know, keep coming back to that place of, God, is this still what you want me to do? I'm willing, and, and, and you know, it may not be exactly what I want, but yeah. I'm willing, and I'm listening, and you know, just show me. And then I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, making sure that as a ministry leader, as a business person, as some, you know, just a woman after God's heart to make sure that we are in his word every day, making sure, sorry, I'm outside, (laughs) Um, making sure that we are in his word every morning or every day, just, you know, drawing from that place of nourishment where we can have that affirmation that he has called us here. And it may be a drier season. It may be a slower season. And it may be that our calling is shifting in a new direction. Um, You know, I experienced that when he led me to start speaking. I thought, are you sure? (laughs) I, I told a friend of mine, I was like, God would never call me to speak. I should never have said that. You know. I said, are you sure that this is what you want me to do? And it was a very 
it was a shift in my calling and it was a new direction in my calling. And, you know, we have to sometimes, we really have to step back and just seek him full out and ask him, okay, Lord, I need you to show me and I need you to affirm that this is exactly what you want. And if it's not what you want, then, you know, give me the wisdom and the courage to be able to pull back and do what you have asked me to do. Amen. Amen. That is so awesome. Um, Definitely. I know it's important to get in his word. Um, uh, I know for me, that's where I stay sane as a mom. I I also stay home with my children and I feel like that's where I get my energy from. Oh yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I wonder, I really do wonder like what I did before I got up and got in his word every day. I know I've struggled and I know it was almost impossible and I can tell, and even my, my mom makes me laugh because she'll call and she can almost tell in my voice. She'll say, have you had your quiet time today? Yeah. No, mom, I didn't get my quiet time today. I'm sure you can tell in my attitude and my tone, Yeah. but I didn't. And, you know, for me, just being in his word every morning, it sets the tone for my entire day. Yeah. You know, I've started it with him. I've prayed. I've talked to him. You know, I've sought him in his word and he's taught me something. And I know that he is walking throughout the day with me, whatever circumstance with my kids, with my husband or, you know, with the ministry. I know he's walking it with me and he's in my day with me. Yeah. Amen. Uh yeah, and I've experienced that too, you know, especially, so I have, um, my, I have three children, my, my two oldest is twins, they 11, and I have my youngest, and she's three, and when I was a stay-at-home mom with my twins, it was extremely hard for me, um, because, and I was just new, and um, you know, I just was a new Christian, and I had my children, and it was extremely new for me. And I experienced that. I realized how important it is for me to have that quiet time. You know, when you have twins, number one, you know. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> you need that extra supernatural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or devil Lord. Yes. yes. And so I, I've experienced that, you know, and then I didn't grow up seeing my mom be like a stay at home mom or anything. I didn't really have an example that I could pull from to be like, um, so what do I do as a stay at home mom? Just stay home, you know, and take care of my children, you know, kind of thing. But there's so much, you know, that I've learned that God has taught me that I, that I could do. And so, um, when I wrote my book, Smart Goals for the Christian Entrepreneur, and when I just struggled with, God, I have this, the things that you put in me, I'm trying to do it, you know, um, when God really taught me that, you know, before I even step out, I need to teach my children, you know, I need to teach my children, especially about him, you know, and how they can get into his word and develop that relationship with him, you know. Absolutely. before I go out and start teaching other people to do the same thing, you know? And so um, God really had to get in me about that. So um, and so my question is, so how do you become so consistent? You know, I think a lot of it has to do with a habit, making it a habit. And, you know, I'm not even going to, like, make you think that I've got it all figured out because I really don't. I still, there are days when I'm still trying to figure it out. Yes. Um, you know, but... In the beginning, it was just making that commitment and knowing that even now it's a commitment. I have committed that time in the morning to him and no one else. And, you know, just I think one of the things that I have I have struggled with is um, something that someone said. I went to a conference over the summer and one of the speakers said, you know, family first, but not family only. And, yeah. you know, our, our first child was a surprise, like surprise, <laughs> like we've only been married for five months. And, uh, when we found out we were expecting her and, you know, I love her and she is such a treasure, but I was 20. Like when she was born, yeah. I was 20 and yeah. I was clueless and me too. Had, uh, had not been a Christian for very long. And I was like, okay, Lord, are you happy? Really? Like, 
don't know what you're, what you're thinking with this, but, you know, I wasn't in the word like I should have been. And I, you know, I, I struggled, I struggled a lot and, um, you know, I didn't know how to pray. No one ever really said, okay, this is how you pray. You know, being saved at 19, yeah. it's not like it's a natural thing. Yeah. Somebody needed to teach me. Like, I need you to show me. Yeah. And, you know, I just kind of imitated what I heard my husband pray. And, you know, it was just very scattered. It was just a very difficult time for me. And, and in that season, and then after the accident, I just... God just began to show me and he just began to teach me and he taught me through that commitment. Like I was so, I just wanted to be committed to him. It didn't always look good. It didn't always last long, but I just wanted that, that first time, that first ounce of my energy of my day devoted fully to him. And over time, it's just been that habit. And you know, my husband and my kids know when that alarm goes off, they know where I'm going. They know where I'm headed. They know yeah. I'm headed to my spot at my desk with my Bible. And my kids see that. They see me study. Um, and, you know, I want them to see that. I want them to see me study because it's such a vital piece for them as as they become Christians, as they grow in his word, as they grow in their relationship with him to see mom doing that. Yeah. And, that drives me as well. You know, it That's drives true. me to um, really invest that time with them and get them in the word. And it's just that, that commitment, making that commitment. Like I know it's going to be hard and I know it's going to be work and it may be difficult. And some days I may not get it right, but I'm committed and I'm going to do this because I know that God is going to work in it and he's going to teach me through it. Yes. And, and he's going to, equip me to be able to teach my children. Amen. And you know what? And for me, I've gotten to a place where like, it was so vital for me to, you know, for me to teach my children because I didn't, I don't want them to grow up like I did and not knowing him and then having to know him do doing like a tragedy or something, yeah. you yeah. know, I, yeah. I don't want that, but sometimes, you, you know, things happen like oh, yeah. you do you understand what I'm saying oh yeah yeah <laughs> so um I just want to put that little caveat in there but um and well, so what I want is to just teach them right the word of God right and for me it's so important more important than me teaching them like how to even cook and clean oh yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> So, so even more like that is so important. Like I want them to leave my house knowing Jesus Christ, you know, and I understand God, you know, works on their heart, but at the same time, they have that foundation. Oh yeah. And that's such a vital thing for them to have. And, you know, it doesn't go unnoticed because I was not raised in a Christian home. I mean, I just, I wasn't, my parents didn't go to church. I think we went on Christmas, maybe an Easter. We, I think we were the, that family, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I didn't grow up. We had Bibles in the house, but I never opened one. You know, my mm -hmm. grandparents, um, my grandparents are devout Christians and they were the ones that took us to Sunday school on occasion and to church on occasion. So I did not grow up in a, in a setting where, okay, you know, when, when things get hard and things get tough, turn to the, the word of God. That was not what I was taught mm. as, as a kid. And it reflected in my teenage years and how I responded to, um, you know, all just the things that went on for a teenager. But, you know, when I, I know that God is so strategic and how he does things and, you know, saving me at the age that he did and, you know, and my dad died and, you know, we've experienced grief along the way, you know, I've lost my dad and my brother. Um, mm. and, and, you know, we've had two miscarriages and then last year my mother-in-law died. So we've experienced a lot of grief and I can honestly say I would not have been able to face any of that having not been rooted in him and his word. I just, it w Amen. would be impossible. And I want my children to see, okay, there are difficulties that are going to happen. There are hurts that are going to happen and life will get hard at times, but I have a, 
an anchor, a firm foundation. I have something to hold on to that gives me hope in those situations. That's what I want for my kids. Amen. And that is where I literally cling to God for. And I know it's just by God's grace that, you know, um, it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I I mean, it's definitely a day by day thing, you know, um, I don't have it, you know, perfectly. And I just pray to God. I literally pray to God every day, like, God, please help. Like, yep. that is my prayer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that my prayer journal has the word, has the words, help me. <laughs> I mean, that probably would be the title if it was ever published in some form of Help me, Lord, help me. Because I, I write it every day, multiple times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, um... So as we close, um, I've been really encouraged and just uplifted. Um, is there any last words that, um, just words of encouragement, you know, for moms and wives that's out there, entrepreneurs? Yes. You know, um, I think one thing that moms and wives, especially that mom heart, um, you know, comparison is a hard thing. Preach. You know, but we look at another mom and we say, oh my word, her kids are so great or they're so well behaved or yeah. look at her. She looks really good today. And here I am in my sweatpants and my t-shirt and yeah. I haven't been able to brush my teeth yet. Okay. You know, I think we just have to give each other some grace yeah. and remember that not a single one of us have it all figured out. We're all in the same boat together. And we have to pray for each other and just encourage one another. And, you know, if you're, if you're not able to get up in the morning and and get in the word, you know, whenever you can, whether it's nap time, whether it's before bed, but just, just encourage you to just be in the word at some point in your day and it will change your attitude. It will change your heart. It will change how you parent. It will change how you are as a wife. Um, and, God will work in your heart and he will do what needs to be done. And you never know. He may call you to do something incredible through it. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. All of um, Michelle's website and information will be on my blog at a purpose driven wife at age All of her social media, um, outlets and things like that will be on there as well again michelle thank you so much for joining us i really enjoy just learning more about you and your story and your blog and the the things that god is doing in your life so thank you so much for having me it was wonderful thank you yes so guys be blessed